the public opinion of Freddy Kitchens being at a all-time low after this first half of the season, the comments that came from Bob Wiley in the offseason seem to have more merit and more punch behind them, especially in the public eye. But we all know that just because an opinion is popular in sports does not necessarily mean that that opinion is true. So what I wanna do is to do what we didn't have the opportunity to do in August when these comments were said. And that is to take Bob Wiley's statements at face value and evaluate the numbers to see if those coaches that Bob Wiley mentioned and those responsibilities they had are the reason why this Browns offense is failing in 2019. And I think the answers here may actually surprise you. So we're going to evaluate Bob Wiley's comments based on three claims. The first being that Kenny Zampezi was responsible for third down passing. The second being that Al Saunders was responsible for the red zone. And the third being that Bob Wiley did the pass protections and the run game. Now it's also worth noting and pointing out that Bob Wiley, Al Saunders, Kenny Zampezi were all Hugh Jackson hires, while Kitchens was a Todd Haley hire. And seeing the amount of tribalism between Todd Haley's guys and Hugh Jackson's guys that were going on in that time period, there would be a basis for bias here against Freddie Kitchens from guys on that side of the fence. So while I'm not saying that their claims are invalid because they are on that side, I will say that it's probably relevant to keep that in mind when we review Bob Wiley's claims. So let's start with the first claim. Now when reviewing this, we're gonna look at a number of stats. Now again, the big claim is that Kenny Zampezi was responsible for the third down passing offense. And in 2018, the Browns had a third down conversion rate of 35.10. This year, the Browns have a third down conversion rate of 30.6. So significant drop there. Quite honestly, not great numbers either year, but better numbers that year. Now let's look at Baker's stats on third and fourth down. Baker's stats on third and fourth down in 2018 were 84 of 139 passing, 60%, nine touchdowns, five interceptions, 78 rate. In 2019, he was 39 of 75. It's 52%. It's god awful. Um, two touchdowns to four interceptions in a in a terrible 41.8 rate. So while the numbers really weren't that great for 2018 on third down, the numbers are terrible this season. So I think there's definitely some validity that Baker Mayfield is probably not being as coached as well in the quarterback room as he was last year. But there is a real good reason for all this. Not a real good excuse though, but a real good reason for it that I'll touch on later. So yes, Bob Wiley's claim holds up here. Kenny Zampezi definitely did a much better job as Baker's quarterback coach. And honestly, it shows in just his day-to-day decision-making on the field. So, score one for Team Wiley. Now, this is the juicy one, right? Al Saunders did the red zone offense. And look how great they were in the red zone last year versus how awful they are in the red zone this year. And on a quick look, if you just look at the red zone numbers from last year, and then you look at the ones from this year, you you would say, yes, Al Saunders must have been a red zone genius last year. He was able to make so much stuff happen. But there's a little bit more to this story than just the 2018 numbers. Because Al Saunders was a coach on this staff for Hugh Jackson's entire tenure plus the end of last season. So three years. Now that first year, Al Saunders was the wide receiver coach. But after that first year, the Browns brought in 
Adam Henry. That 2017 season is when Al Saunders had his responsibilities moved from just being a wide receiver coach to designing the red zone offense. And in 2017, while theoretically Al Saunders is doing the same job that he did in 2018, the red zone numbers aren't that great. They're actually just as bad as they are right now. So again, the 2018 red zone offense was amazing. It was ranked six, had a 66.67 success rate, and Baker was hot in the red zone. 50 out of 79, 63% passing, 20 touchdowns, no interceptions in the red zone. But then we look to Al's other year of work under the Cleveland Browns. Now again, he had Deshaun Kaiser, but right now, you know, Baker hasn't looked that much better than Deshaun Kaiser this season. So 2017, while presumably, now this is an assumption, but this is a educated assumption, knowing the structure of the Browns. But that year, when you would guess Al Saunders was in charge of the red zone, the Browns ranked 25th with a 48.72 success rate, which is eerily similar to what they are doing right now because right now the Browns are ranked 25th in the NFL with a 46.15 success rate. So I think Al's influence here with the offense was just a bit overblown. I do think this is one of the areas, and I know this is not popular to say nice things about Freddie Kitchens right now, but quite honestly, it only makes sense that this is one of the areas where Freddie Kitchens played a significant role in as a offensive coordinator because things did not look great in the red zone at the beginning of the season. They looked great once Freddie took over as offensive coordinator. And that is when things took a significant jump to those numbers that we saw Baker put up last season. If we're going to act like Al Saunders is this red zone genius then Al Saunders would probably have a job somewhere else in the NFL or his 2017 numbers would not look as a poultry as the Browns do right now. I think Freddie had something to do with it. Maybe Baker was just playing better and more confident and executing better, but giving all of the credit to Al Saunders seems a little bit ridiculous there, so I can't be with Bob Wiley on that claim. You might notice there is a running kind of theme here when it comes to Freddie Kitchens and why this team doesn't look as great. And I keep mentioning the assistants on the coaching staff because I think, I think that's one of the biggest problems on this entire staff, but I'll touch on that later. Now, the third and final claim. Now, again, I'm going to reiterate that I'm reviewing these claims against how the Browns are doing now and seeing if these specific coaches were responsible for the success like Wiley has claimed and inferred. So for offensive line play, all we really have is advanced numbers to know how good offensive line play is throughout the league. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. And first, we're going to look at the pass blocking in 2018. They were ranked 16th. They gave up 18 sacks and they had an adjusted sack rate of 7.0 now in 2019 they're ranked 16th with an adjusted sack rate of 6.7 i left out the total amount of sacks given up it's not fair to have an accumulated stat up there for a half season against a full season so granted these numbers might not hold up but as of right now in 2019 the browns offensive line at pass blocking is shockingly just as good as they were in 2018. And I think this is an interesting one, right? Because the offensive line improved later on in the season greatly. So that's going to impact the numbers there. But Bob Wiley was the offensive line coach the entire season. So he really doesn't have an excuse built in there. But again, this is Bob Wiley's claim. And right now, the pass blocking does not seem like it's much different at this point in the season than it was last year. So I don't know if Bob Wiley has a lot to do with that. Now let's look at the run blocking. And you know what? These numbers actually surprised me a great deal. In 2018, the Browns had a running offense ranked 17th with the 24th toughest ranked schedule. They had 4.4 yards per carry. They were ranked bottom last in power rank. And they were ranked 24th in stuff rank. In 2019, 2019, the Browns have the 13th ranked rushing offense, and that is against the number one 
toughest schedule in the NFL, according to Football Outsiders. They are averaging 5.1 yards per carry. They have a power rank of 25, and they have a stuff rank of 9. They are significantly better run blocking than they were last year. If the team's technically slightly better at pass blocking and better at run blocking than they were last year, then I don't know if Bob Wiley leaving is the problem with the Cleveland Browns this year. I don't see it. This offensive line has not fallen off a cliff like we think it has, and it's actually significantly improved in run blocking, which you can attribute to Nick Chubb. But again, the Browns had Nick Chubb last year. And also, I think this is another area of the game that you kind of have to give credit to Freddie Kitchens because you got to remember, Freddie Kitchens was a running back coach. With all, and I mean all, of Freddie Kitchens' flaws that have been exposed, which is there have been plenty of Freddie Kitchens' flaws to be exposed. It's kind of easy to overlook the things that actually got Freddie Kitchens the job. And I think inside the building, they know that Freddie Kitchens was actually really good at red zone offense and really good at the run game. What blows my mind is that Freddie Kitchens is so good, especially in the run game area, and has been struggling in the red zone so much that he doesn't think to run the ball more, but that's another topic for another day. That means that only one of these three major claims that Bob Wiley has had holds up under a statistical analysis, and that is that the quarterback coach is much worse than the quarterback coach they had last year. That is true. That is significant. But the other claims don't seem to hold up water. So while I think that these guys specifically that Bob Wiley mentioned are not the answer, I do think the absences in the area in which they coach are a symptom of a much, much bigger problem with the Cleveland Browns coaching staff. That is the lack of experience, not just at head coach, but in the entire coaching staff, especially a coaching staff that is trying to support a first-year head coach. In most other NFL situations, there is normally at least five or six years of head coaching experience in a coaching staff trying to support a first-year head coach. The Cleveland Browns have exactly one year of head coaching experience, and that is with Steve Wilkes, who got fired in one year in Arizona last year. So not a lot of great head coaching experience. Look, I'm not giving an excuse for Freddie Kitchens and some of the huge mistakes he's made this season, but I am offering up a good reason for why these mistakes have continued to happen. Because think about what Freddie Kitchens' biggest mistake is throughout the season. He's too obsessed with trying to outthink other coaches way too much, aka he gets too cute. And you can see this even in his daily press conferences with the media where he's so hush-hush about certain personnel decisions and certain injury decisions that other head coaches just aren't that hush-hush about. And that's because Freddie Kitchens thinks he's slick. He thinks he's doing something. He thinks he's getting the leg up on the opponent, but he's not. That's the problem with Freddie Kitchens. He's always trying to get one over on the other team when he doesn't, A, have the experience on staff or on the roster to execute these things, and B, he doesn't have to. Think what you think about guys like Mike Tomlin and guys like Jim Harbaugh or, or any other veteran coach that you can name. I promise you that none of those veteran coaches would be trying to get cute when they have the roster that the Cleveland Browns have. When the Pittsburgh Steelers had the obvious talent advantage on offense with the Triple Bs, you didn't see Mike Tomlin trying to do double reverses and trying to get cute. He just did play action bootlegs, rolled out and threw the ball 60 yards down the field to Antonio Brown and dared you to beat him. He would run the ball a million times with Le'Veon Bell and dare you to beat him. This is what good coaches do. They get the ball to their best players. They don't try to outsmart everybody, even Bill Belichick, who everybody gives this reputation of being a sneaky genius and he'll try some tricks and all of that. When he had Randy Moss and he had Tom Brady, Bill Belichick wasn't out here trying to get cute, having people being distracted by Randy Moss. No, he had Tom Brady drop back and throw that thing up to Randy Moss every play. And it worked out. 
because that's what you do when you have the talent that the Browns should have on roster. But that's not what Freddie Kitchens does. And, and it's universal in sports. For those of you who watch my channel and are Cleveland fans, remember when LeBron came back to the Cleveland Cavaliers and David Blatt was the coach? See, the reason you might not remember the name David Blatt is because David Blatt wanted to run his offense when LeBron James wanted to do what LeBron James does, just play basketball. And under Blatt, the Cavs never really hit their stride. It was always frustrating. You felt like they were always underperforming because they were too busy trying to outsmart defenses when they didn't have to. They had Kevin Love. They had LeBron James. They had Kyrie Irving. They could just outpower teams. But David Blatt was too obsessed with trying to run his offense. When David Black got fired and Tyron Lue replaced him, Tyron Lue won a championship because Lou realized he didn't need to run this elaborate offense and try to outsmart teams when he just has the talent to overwhelm them. And that's the mistake that Freddie Kitchens is making. He's trying to do too much to outsmart teams when he could just easily overwhelm them. He does not look at Odell as this tool to use to win a game. He looks at Odell as a shiny thing to distract teams while he throws the ball to his third string, just got off the practice squad, wide receiver. When you're starting Bashar Perriman, that kind of makes sense. That kind of works out. But when you have Odell Beckham Jr., that is categorically stupid. But that's not the thing that has felt this thing the most. That's not where Dorsey and Kitchens have felt the hardest. No, where they felt the hardest is they did a horrendous job in hiring assistants. They have way too many inexperienced guys at way too many important spots of this offense specifically. I ask you to look in the areas where this team has had some limited amount of success. Running backs run blocking and with the exception of the denver game the secondary has actually been pretty good this season that's not a coincidence you know what that coincides with where there is experience at the assistant level in the coaching staff you got stump mitchell as the running back coach you got james campin as the offensive line coach you got joe witt back there in the secondary those are experienced position coaches who have done that specific job for over eight to 10 years in the NFL. That's why those areas aren't lacking on the team. But then look at where the Browns have underwhelmed outside of having talent in these positions and no excuse for this to happen. The defensive line, the quarterback, game management, offensive quality control, all of these guys are in their first year of coaching in the NFL. And all of those groups are severely underperforming. It's really that simple. You can have an experience at head coach, but you can't have an entire coaching staff that is inexperienced. Again, there's only one year of head coaching experience in Berea. That is a major problem for a team that's trying to win now. So while we can sit here and make an argument to give the Browns time, the Browns simply don't have that. This needs to turn around this year or next year by the latest because after that, you know what's happening? The financial end of the game is going to come up. Miles Garrett is going to be up for a deal. Baker might be up for a deal if he gets his act together. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to be up. Jarvis Landry is going to be up for a deal and i don't know how you fix this problem with the coaching staff without simply firing everyone unless you win games if you win games you can fix a lot of things because if you don't win games and you don't give yourself an opportunity to hire more experience next year you're screwed because if this team finishes bad and they don't fire freddie kitchens at the end of the year do you know how hard it is going to be to attract any veteran coach to what looks like a sinking ship so yes Bob Wiley is right 
in the way that there is no experience in Berea, and that is the problem. Is he and his guys, were they the right guys to give that experience out? I don't think so. I think there are probably more can qualified candidates out there than the people that Bob Wiley mentioned. But Bob Wiley does bring up a valid point, and that valid point is Freddie Kitchens is not only inexperienced and a little underqualified for the job, he has no experience at the position level. And when you don't have experience at the head coach level, you don't have experience at the position level, you barely have experience at the coordinator level, then you have a lot of guys following people who don't know what they're talking about, which leads to the clown show that this season has been. Now, look, they can clean it up. They can magically get better. They can win some games down the stretch, finish this with an above 500 record, not look like a sinking ship, and be able to gut some of the inexperienced coaches that they have right now and replace them with more experience. Yes, that certainly is a thing that could happen. But it's not likely, and I think that is why if the Browns don't finish with an above 500 record, the firing of Freddie Kitchens is inevitable because that is the only way that the Browns are gonna be able to get out of this hole that they put themselves in by hiring too many inexperienced position coaches. But that's just my opinion on the matter. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think Bob Wiley's right, despite the stats indicating that on most of his claims, he has really nothing to bear? Or do you think I'm just crazy and biased? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like what I do here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ding that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. But have a great day. Have a good night.